So can you tell me how you got started onto space exploration? Yeah, sure. I started watching a documentary in 2008 about uh, the Apollo programs called When We Left Earth. It was documenting NASA's efforts in the 1950s and 1960s to get out into space and explore the moon. And I was so in incredibly inspired by it that it, it really in inspired me to actually reach out to NASA on a whim and try and uh, get a job there. Uh, serendipitously, I was able to get a job there despite not having a scientific background and it really changed my life. Totally, I was able to learn from different scientists about uh, dark matter and robots, and it was just such an incredible experience. Uh, but what I actually ended up learning while I was at NASA was that I didn't need to stay there in order to contribute to space exploration. I could actually contribute to scientific discovery through a variety of different means uh, without actually working at NASA. And so that really inspired me to spread the word uh, to other people that you can actually contribute to scientific discovery, even if you have a background in, in design or programming or uh, community management, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, you run Space Hack, which is a, a kind of a starting point for a lot of people to get involved in space exploration and so on. But I mean, how you know, do like people who aren't literally rocket scientists get involved with space? So there's a variety of ways that people can actually get involved in space exploration. Uh, it really ranges from all different types of learning curves and ages and backgrounds. You can be a developer and help search for dark matter by creating better algorithms to search for it. You can build robots that actually go to the moon through Google Lunar X Prize. There are a lot of ways in which you can analyze data to actually discover new galaxies that haven't been discovered before. A lot of the projects on spacehack.org are very collaborative and people are always happy to help you explore space um, through whatever skills and backgrounds you have to bring to it. So it sounds like there's a lot of data out there that there just isn't the, I don't know, there aren't the right amount of people available inside NASA and other organizations to analyze it and that if more people get involved we can discover more. Yeah, there's a lot of data that's already been made open. So the problem actually isn't about getting more data open, although that's always great. But the fact is that a lot of data isn't actually that accessible to people. It's either buried deep in a government website or it's very hard to understand. And so until someone comes along and actually builds an interface to it or does a project with it, it's not really that accessible for a wide variety of people to get involved. However, when that data is made more accessible, it is something where we have to get a lot of people to come together to analyze it on a human level. Uh, while we have tons and tons of data coming in and it's hard to analyze it all on a human level, robots are still not that great at analyzing it the way that humans can. So there's really a human factor uh, where humans and robots can be working together to analyze data to enhance scientific discovery. So in a sense, it's kind of a larger machine learning algorithm that you can get involved with, but actually allows you to get involved in space exploration and make scientific discoveries. Great. And you mentioned before about sending things to the moon. Now, you're, not, you're kidding me, right? We, I can build something that could go to the moon? Yeah, you can actually build things that go to the moon, uh, spacecrafts or different rovers and robots. Uh, Google Lunar X Prize is a $30 million competition to build and send a robot to the moon and have it collect a bunch of cool data and have it come back. Uh, the really cool thing about Google Lunar X Prize, though, is that people are not only competing to see who can get to the moon first, but a lot of the teams are really committed to trying to explore space on a faster and cheaper schedule than governments have before. And so these are individuals from all around the world who are actually participating in this. This isn't governments, and through it, we're not only competing to go to the moon, but we're also competing to see who can build new technologies that will help explore space for all of us around the world on a faster schedule. So like the first space race obviously spun off a lot of great technologies that have been used in various places. You're saying that part of the intent of this Lunar X Prize is to do the same thing again, basically have a lot of side effect beneficial technology. Right, so there's teams in the Google Lunar X Prize that are not only building robots, but they are working on deep space communications, they are working on retrieval methods, they're working on a variety of things that may or may not end up actually benefiting science uh, directly to sending things to the moon. But if we can have a deep space internet like network, these things are really great and these competitions are really fostering and, and pushing people to create these new technologies. So for anyone wanting to get started, right, the place to go is the website you run, Space Hack. 
Yeah, spacehack.org is a directory of all these different ways to participate in space exploration. So there's uh, projects about robots, there's projects about uh, galaxies, there's projects about dark matter, there's projects that are more educational, some are competitive, some are collaborative, uh, all different uh, ways in which you can get involved in space exploration without having a scientific background. Great. And to wrap up, I just want to ask you about Science Hack Day, which we were talking about before. What, what is it? Um, why is it? Yeah, Science Hack Day is essentially a weekend in which scientists, technologists, designers, and people generally with good ideas come together in the same physical space to see what they can build and create within a weekend. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, Science Hack Day creates a bunch of hacks, some of which are very silly science hacks, some are serious. Uh, but the idea for Science Hack Day is to really spark creativity and new ways of thinking about science that can open it up to a general, uh, more general public. And so it's not just about coming together to learn about science that weekend, but it's coming together to actually open science and see what you can do with it. And that's something that you can do with or without a scientific background. And so you not only have developers and designers learning from scientists, but you have scientists learning how to use Arduino to prototype things or how to use uh, different uh, new ways to think about communicating ideas within their domains. That's great. So when and where is that happening? So Science Hack Day happened twice last year, once in London and once in San Francisco. It's going to happen again in San Francisco sometime between September to December this year in 2011. Okay, we'll keep our eyes peeled. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thanks.